Hello, everyone. Welcome to everyone who is joining us. We're right on two o'clock now, so uh, we'll just give people another minute or two to start joining and then we will um, get underway. We still have a few people joining. Hello and welcome to everybody who has joined in the last minute or two. We're just waiting another 30 seconds to a minute here for a few more people to join, and then we will get underway. All right, well, we are at 201, so uh, we will get underway here with our webinar that is called At Home at U Waterloo, Addressing Your Graduate Housing Questions. So again, uh, welcome to everyone and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Carrie Huber and I'm the Manager of Graduate Marketing and Recruitment at uh, Grad Studies and Postdoctoral Affairs here at U Waterloo. And um, I will be your host for today. I'll be telling you a little bit about Waterloo Region and what it's like to live here, and then I'll be moderating our Q&A at the end. Uh, joining us from our partners in campus housing, we have Emily O'Connor, who's our housing services advisor, and Yvonne Yang, our residence life coordinator. So Yvonne will take you through some of the details of our on-campus housing for graduate students, uh, along with some information on what life is like in residence here. And then Emily will share information about applying for on-campus housing and some of the processes around offers and wait lists and all those types of processes. And then she'll also be sharing information about off-campus housing as well. Uh, and then working in the background today, we have my colleague Graham Northcote, who's our graduate and postdoctoral programming specialist, um, who will be uh, making everything happen in the background. So again, uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. So before we get started, I'd like to recognize that the University of Waterloo acknowledges that much of our work takes place on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Tract, the land promised to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Our active work towards reconciliation takes place across our campuses through research, learning, teaching, and community building. So just a couple notes on housekeeping uh, before we get into the presentation. Uh, our format today uh, will be a presentation followed by a live Q&A. Um, so the presentation and the Q&A are being recorded and they will be posted on our GSPA website in the future students section um, following the presentation, probably a day or two um, afterwards once it's ready to go. Um, and of course, anyone who is registered for this presentation will get an email with the link uh, to the recording as well. So that will come straight to your inbox if you're registered. Um, the attendee audio and video functions are disabled today, but if you do have any questions at any time during the presentation, uh, please use the Q&A function that's located at the bottom center of your screen. And then if your question is flagged to be answered during the Q&A following the presentation, uh, it will remain pending until it's answered live. So unfortunately, we won't be able to answer questions in the background today, but we will try and get to as many questions as possible uh, during the Q&A portion. And we'll try and pull out the ones that are going to be most relevant to the greatest number of people. Um, so I would just ask that when you do ask questions, um, please try and keep them a little bit more general, um, ones that, that, might, that other people might have as well. Um, if you do have questions that are very specific or about very specific personal situations, um, these can be addressed through email to our campus housing experts, and we'll share all of that information uh, towards the end of the presentation. And then also any links uh, that we mentioned will be added to the chat, and those will also be available uh, with the recording as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit uh, just quickly about living in KW and Waterloo Region. So uh, the University of Waterloo is located in Southern Ontario in the city of Waterloo, and we're about 100 kilometers uh, west of Toronto. 
So campus is located uh, in the city of Waterloo, which is a short distance from uptown Waterloo, uh, which is the main downtown area of Waterloo. And campus is easily accessed by public transportation, uh, which includes the recently built ION light rail rapid transit line. And you can check out our interactive campus map and our graduate study self guided tour to get to uh, to kind of get to know your way around campus a little bit and i'll get Graham to just pop those in the chat for us. Um, Waterloo region is made up of the cities of Kitchener Waterloo Cambridge and the surrounding townships and our region is actually one of the fastest growing regions in Canada and we're currently home to over 600,000 residents. Waterloo is among the top 20 startup ecosystems in the world. We're home to some of Canada's largest tech companies, global think tanks, innovation hubs, and companies like Google and Shopify also have headquarters here. And uh, not only are we home to an array of startups and tech giants, um, but we do have a vibrant food scene, uh, farmers markets, incredible craft breweries. We have great live music and music organizations, amazing restaurants uh, from farm to table to vegan cafes, old school diners, and of course, tacos everybody's favorite. Uh, there's also lots to do in our region. Um, we have Christmas markets, food festivals, and tons of special events and festivals happening almost every weekend in both Kitchener and Waterloo in the summertime. Uh, we also host the world's largest Oktoberfest outside of Munich, Germany, when it's not COVID, of course. So hopefully that will be back next year. Uh, Waterloo region also has lots of outdoor amenities uh, like biking and walking trails and even a local ski hill so there's never a shortage of things to do no matter the season. And if you'd like to get a better idea of campus and the city, we have uh, special tours just for graduate students um, around Waterloo region and for our campus. And I will get Graham to pop those, pop those in the chat and you can check those out um, later when you have time. Uh, so now I'd like to pass it over to Yvonne to talk about some of our on-campus housing options. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yvonne and uh, I'm the Res Life Coordinator here for our grad students as well as uh, our families. If you'd like to stay with us and see all which I see a lot of you guys have uh, popped up your wonderful questions here, that's great. So two options for you, either you will be staying at CLV South and these are four bedroom townhouses for single grad students, or you will have the options to stay at CLV North and these are two bedroom townhouses for single grad students as well as our student families. Um, by living here at a CLV, it will be very, very convenient for you. You will be very close to campus and we do provide seasonal shuttles. At this moment, the seasonal shuttle is being paused because of the COVID pandemic and it will be reassessed during the spring term. However, students do have other options that CLV is right in front of a bus stop, that all grad students are all eligible for the local universal GRT bus pass, uh, bus pass um, that will allow residents to hop on the city bus, buses that go in front of the building and it will look through the campus as a ring road. So even when the seasonal shuttle is not running, there will be other options uh, for you guys as well. And uh, by living here, you will have reliable and the trustworthy maintenance support and with a great landlord, and that is the university, we have on-site support and community building from our campus housing, as well as our wonderful residence life zones. And here, by living here, uh, all the, um, everything is included, including your utilities, uh, your high-speed internet, as well as our community event. And our community center here, we have ping pong tables for you, TV for movie nights, as well as video games. And we also have uh, quite a study area and that including the bookable study room. The programming is designed by our residence life dolls with our grad students, as well as our families in mind. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So if you would like to stay with us, the first question is, am I eligible for on-campus housing? 
whether you are a single grad student or a student family, you must be a full-time registered U Waterloo grad student to be eligible. For our student families, besides the one that I just mentioned, you must apply either as a student couple or you must apply as a student with a family. And that is four person occupancy limit, including the primary tenant. We have lots of great resources listed on our website as well. And uh, I see that it's being shared in the chat as well. In the frequently asked uh, ask a question session, we have sections dedicated to answer the, the, eligibility, the eligibility questions uh, at Columbia Lake Village, and you are more than welcome to check them out. When it is renewal season, and if you are eligible, you will be receiving emails and notifications from Campus Housing to instruct you how to finish the different steps to secure you a spot for next term. If, an, and certain, if at a certain point throughout the term or throughout your stay and CLD that your academic status changed, either that you become part-time, you are inactive, or you become degree, uh, degree complete, please reach out to me as your ROC immediately to discuss next steps. Next slide, please. So first, let's go over the single grad housing, and these include the four bedroom in the south, as well as the two bedroom in the north. It is a four month renewable contracts that align with our academic terms, the fall, winter, and spring. Throughout this whole time uh, living at CLB, you must be enrolled as a full-time grad student to be eligible. It is a sweet style living, which I will uh, introduce you what everything is included. It is furnished with some appliances included and uh, with the wonderful amenities include the front desk, uh, your internet, don't support utilities. We have laundry facilities on site and campus shuttle, shared amenities, community center, uh, grocery shuttle, et cetera. The meal plan option for single grad students as well as our families are all optional. So at a CLV South, um, in the bedroom, you will have one single bed uh, with mattress. You will have a closet and a dresser, and the closet is part of the structure. It is not a freestanding piece of furniture. You have a desk, desk lamp and chair, with the basket, um, cork board, unlimited high-speed internet, of course. And in the living room and uh, your dining room, you have a three-seater couch and one coffee table, two chairs, two end tables, one table plus four chairs for the dining room. The kitchen is equipped with fridge and a stove, one full bathroom and four bedrooms and you have a one storage room and one small outdoor patio. If you live in the north, you will have a living room with a couch and three end tables. You have a kitchen with fridge and a stove, dining areas with a table and two chairs. You have 1.5 bathrooms and the 0.5 bathrooms locates at the main floor. You just don't have a shower over there. Two bedrooms upstairs, and each uh, each has a single bed with mattress, desk, desk chair, dresser, small outdoor patio. You have a washing machine and dryer within your uh, within your unit, and you have a study room and a den. This part is not furnished, and it is in the basement. Next slide, please. Now it has come to our student family housing. I also see some interest there as well. Uh, so for the student family housing, it is a 12 month renewable contracts from August the 1st through July 31st with 60 days of notice for terminations. You must remain as an enrolled full-time grad student this whole time. You will have the entire townhouse uh, for your entire family, two bedroom, 1.5 bathroom. It is unfurnished with some appliances included and the amenities part is the same as the single grad student. If at a certain point for our student families, your academic status may change. So either you become part-time or you are on parental leave or you become degree complete, please reach out to me immediately and we can go over and discuss the next steps. 
And by living here, you are living at a really safe, quiet, and a clean community, surrounded by other student families, very close to campus with a seasonal shuttle, the same as what I've mentioned before, reliable and trustworthy maintenance services, on-site support from campus housing, as well as our residents live dawn, uh, dawn team. And we do have one dawn um, as a family dawn that is, uh, that is dedicated to support our families. All inclusive living, utilities, your internet, as well as our community events. You will get great support and programming for spouses as well as international families. Here at the community center, we also offer uh, recreational programming for children. And right now, as the university starts to open up a bit more in person, the Residence Life Dawn team will, will continue to explore for more in-person programming opportunities to serve our grad students as well as our student families. Next slide, please. So my last part, I would like to mention a little bit about the um, experience while you're here with us and CLV. Um, you will be living at a really safe, quiet, and clean community and have the chance to meet with other grad students, benefit from a very clean location, really close to the university. Also, you will have the opportunity to get to know and meet with our campus housing staff working at a CLV, as well as to get to know our wonderful Brad Dons to build connections as well as engage with the community. Um, the Grad Operations team, we're a, uh, we're a team of five professional staff to provide support varies from student support, from occupancy, facilities and maintenance, as well as all other areas that is uh, uh, relate to the grad student living. We're here to deliver the best possible grad and student family experience by ensuring that all the functional areas are playing that are playing important grad operations role and making sure that we're working efficiently together and we're understanding and meeting all of your needs. Our goal is to create a grad and a student family residence experience that all the Waterloo grad students and families absolutely love and you will benefit from. So this includes your personally as well as your academic experience with us. So then a CLV hopefully become your second home as well as your preferred housing choice for the Waterloo grad students as well as our student families. For our grad dawn team, they're also very, very essential to provide support to our students. And they're here to be a bridge between students as well as our campus housing staff. And they will organize and lead amazing programs for all the students living here at CLV. Dons, they do have duty rounds every day, and this is to ensure our community safety, as well as to report any community maintenance or facility concerns. They also reach out to students through Teams message or emails to check in with you to share useful information about upcoming programming, as well as important campus housing information. Every month, our grad dawn team will organize about four to eight community events aiming to strengthen the general well being, to support smooth transition to residents, to campus, to the KW region, as well as to Canada, to establish a sense of belonging. As well uh, as well as connection to the grad to the graduate community and to the University of Waterloo. Also, you will be able to build great relationships with other grad students as your peers. Um, the program and the event information is shared through our Teams channel. We also have a CLV Instagram account, uh, and we have a bulletin board here at the community center. If at a certain point as a resident here, you have any questions in regard to your living condition or about your neighborhood, feel free to reach out to your Don as they would love to hear from you as well as to provide help. So now I would like to pass it on to Emily. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to chat about um, the application process for grad housing and family housing. Um, so uh, applications for the fall 2022 term has is open and it opened on March 29th at 9 a.m. Um, offers are first come first serve basis um, and they're based off of availability 
So the key for this is to apply early. Um, with that being said, um, our existing grad and families have an opportunity to extend their contracts with us. Um, and based off of the take rate from there, then we know what our availability looks like for the upcoming term. Um, so just to share with everybody, the take rate is about 80%. It is quite high. Um, so this is a very in-demand uh, source of housing. Um, if you would like to request a suite mate in your application, you can definitely identify them um, in the single grad application. Um, unfortunately, we can't guarantee that you both will be matched, but we do try our best to, to ensure that that is um, taken into account. Um, and we try to accommodate when possible. If you do not have a suite, my, suite mate in mind, um, we will match you primarily based on gender and age, just to try and find a good, a good fit um, for you. So I, our apply page is open. Um, if you're interested, you're more than welcome to submit an application um, for that. Um, and then I will chat about applying for family housing. So I can go to the next slide, thank you. Um, so with regards to family housing, you wanna make sure that you meet the criteria for that. Um, so we highly recommend taking the time to review that criteria before you apply, just to ensure that this is truly an option for you and your family. Um, again, our family housing is very much in high demand um, and with a limited number of units, we have 82 in total, we can't guarantee this type of housing for everyone who's interested. Um, so with family housing, um, we don't have an application like the single grad housing. What we have is a wait list. Um, so you're more than welcome to join the family wait list. To keep in mind, you can only join the family wait list um, if you are confirmed your offer with Waterloo, meaning that you're all set up with your Waterloo email address, 2FA, um, and Duo signed up, then you can add to the wait list. So if you have not yet accepted an offer, um, unfortunately at this time you can't join the wait list. We try to make sure that everyone who joins the wait list um, is in true, in fact, coming to Waterloo, just so we can limit the number of people we have to go through um, if they don't join. So. Um, offers are not guaranteed and they depend when and if the current family decides to leave. Um, units may become available at different times throughout the academic year and a contract date start date may not coincide with a term start dates. It's another thing to keep in mind with family housing. So when we have units come available, if someone has graduated, they no longer need this and they move out, we have a unit come available, doesn't always align with the beginning of a term. Um, we go to the next person available on our family housing wait list. Um, so yes, just to confirm again, you will need your WADAM activated in order to log into signing up on the wait list. So with regards to fees, um, fees are a little bit different for grad and family housing. So with graduate housing, fees are paid um, by term and fees are paid in the same way that you would pay your tuition. So you would see the fees posted to your Quest account and you would make a payment through that. Um, so you'll see on the screen, we've got the fees um, for the single room, which is a two bedroom suite, as well as the four bedroom suite option. Um, with, when it comes to family housing, um, fees are paid monthly, very similar to renting. Um, so that would be, um, and family housing fees are paid monthly through our online payment portal or via certified check. Um, slash money order. So that's how those are paid. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is off-campus housing. So um, just with with grad and family housing being quite in high demand and we are a little bit on the limited side, um, we can't accommodate everyone who's interested, um, a lot of students start to look for off-campus housing. So with campus house, off-campus housing, um, this department works as a connective resource to connect students with potential off-campus housing avenues. Um, so we can provide you with some resources, some tips, um, and help you get started for looking that, um, looking and making your search. Um, so we have our website, which I believe has just gotten shared. So we do manage an off-campus housing uh, listing site, and you can definitely search on there. I will say, with that listing service, there's more probable options for single grads than family housing. Family housing is a little bit more 
tricky if you're looking for um, like a whole unit space with the kitchen and everything um, that's very exclusive to your singular family. If you are looking for that, you're more than welcome to send um, me an email and I can share some other resources with you. Um, so what I like to suggest is when you're searching for off-campus housing, make sure you familiarize yourself with the area online. Um, check to see where these rentals are located in relation to campus, um, also in relation to transportation. If you're not directly near campus, are you close to um, the various bus routes um, and such? Um, so I have some sites on our off-campus housing website um, that are a good option. If you're not finding anything on our off-campus housing website, you can check out rentals.ca, Kijiji, student-run Facebook housing groups, PadMapper, um, the Canadian Federation of Students. Um, please note that campus housing is not affiliated with these options. We're just simply just recommending these are some options that students use to find uh, various listings. Um, but if you're not from the area and you're looking at uh, a listing and you've got some questions about it, maybe the legitimacy, is this truly where it is, or have any sorts of those kinds of questions, I can definitely do my best to help answer and give you some more information. So um, that would be emailing housing at uwaterloo.ca and I can help um, when I, where I can with those inquiries. Um, so when you're looking for off-campus housing in the Waterloo region, we can talk about like what to expect. Um, typically we're seeing off-campus housing rentals going for 550 to $1,500 a month. Um, $1,500 a month, we're talking just singular rooms for a single person, families is, is a whole nother ball game. Um, some factors that go into play in the cost is the location, the space and the included amenities. So when you're looking at listings, making sure that you understand what's all involved in that cost Sometimes there are additional utilities are, are, are separate or internet separate. So just make sure that you're getting a good idea of, of what that will cost for a month. Um, more and more landlords are asking now for rent deposits. And while this is something that they legally can request from you, um, we do not recommend sending any money before two things. One, you viewed the rental property. This means either gone in person um, to look it out and check it out and to, or sorry, um, if you can set up a virtual meeting, if you're comfortable with that, if you don't have the ability to go um, to Waterloo Region, you can perhaps see if the landlord will be willing to do a video call with you to show you the property, and to signing the rental agreement. So those are two very key pieces um, that we recommend doing a good review, making sure you feel comfortable before you um, give any money over. Um, I will say with due to the pandemic, the rental market in the Waterloo region has absolutely exploded over the last few years. Um, so expect prices to be higher than usual and listings to move quickly. So I recommend having everything in order, understanding what you're comfortable budget wise, location, making sure that you're prepared um, with what to expect so that you can jump in when needed. We do have some great tips and rental information on our off-campus housing webpage under the information for students sidebar. Um, and I highly recommend giving this webpage a really good review before conducting your search. I can talk a little bit about leases. So leases are a binding contract granting use or occupation of a property during a specified period in exchange for a specified rent. So this document is used to outline the rights and responsibilities of both the landlord and tenant any tenant who signs the lease may be jointly or solely responsible for the entire rent of the unit. So make sure you're reading these documents closely. Most landlords will allow you to sign a separate lease for a single room within a unit. Thus, if other tenants miss their rental payments, you are not responsible for covering their missed payments. So if you're looking with a group of students, um, say you and a few friends are looking for off-campus housing, just make sure that that's all very clear um, in case anything happens. Um, so the landlord ten tenant rights and responsibilities remain under the Residential Tenancy Act um, and that you can find on our website as well. I also have a copy of the standardized lease agreement on our off-campus housing webpage. If you are looking at maybe wanting to see what's all included in that, um, I will say a lot of the local landlords in the area, they do tweak it a bit just depending on the property if there's other things to add in about maybe snow removal and that kind of stuff. 
Um, so that is a bit different. Um, tenant rights, I can chat about that too. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna reiterate, do not sign a lease or pay before seeing it. Um, rental scams are a thing. And unfortunately with the pandemic, we have seen a rise in, um, in these sort of listings. So a landlord may require you to pay first and last month's rent prior to moving in. Um, the last month's rent would be reserved uh, as a deposit on the unit. Um, so that could be something that uh, you, you're asked for. So just making sure that you're understanding of what all the costs are coming in. Um, as well, some landlords ask for a, a damage deposit. Um, this is something, again, they can legally request. You do not have to pay it. Um, however, if you choose not to pay it, you may not get the unit. So just keep that in mind. Um, and make sure you've got photo proof just to ensure that, you know, everything is well documented and to ensure if you do pay a, a damage deposit that you get that back upon no damages being left. Um, with regards to maintenance concerns, if you are living off campus, um, sometimes there can be issues with um, various um, pieces of the property, maybe util um, the utilities are not working or the fridge is broken, something like that. Um, the landlord is responsible for providing and maintaining a residential complex, including the rental units in a good state of repair and fit for habitation, um, and also complying with health, safety, um, housing, and maintenance standards. So there, if you are having issues with that, we do have some resources online just to help out figuring out what your rights are as a tenant in situations like that. Um, as well, landlords can request uh, references from previous landlords. Um, other things confirming that you are a student, maybe they're going to ask for proof like that. Only share what you're comfortable sharing. Um, so that I just pro uh, proceed with caution with that. Um, we've got information about breaking leases and that kind of, kind of stuff on our website as well. Just keep in mind, once you have a, a signed lease, you are locked into that lease. So if you do, um, if you are looking at perhaps breaking a lease, it's a bit of a tricky thing. Um, we also have safety tips on our website. So I would recommend checking those out as well. Um, safety about the area, different things um, we have in the area as well, just kind of getting more familiar with Waterloo Region. Um, and then last, just about support. Um, so feel free if you have inquiries to email um, either inboxes. They both come to me, um, so either one will work. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them on my way. Um, and we can also offer second opinions if you're looking at listings and you're not in the area, feel free to send them, send them to me. As well, we have the landlord and tenant board. Um, so they would be working with you if you have disputes. Um, or need legal support if you're living off campus and such, um, which would also be Waterloo Regional Community Legal Services. So that is the information that I have for you today. And I will um, awesome. open the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Emily. Uh, thanks, Emily um, and Yvonne for sharing that information. Um, yeah, I think it's just really important um, to keep in mind what Emily said about um, off-campus housing that Things really have changed a lot in Waterloo Region. Not only, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, um, because we're growing so much, that's that's a big factor. A lot of people are wanting to live here, so that's driving up um, rents and, and cost of living. Um, so just being being really sure that you do all of your research and really understand um, how the different kinds of housing can incur different costs. So, you know, as Emily mentioned, it will be it will be a lot more expensive if you're living on your own in a one bedroom apartment or condo that's very close to campus versus shared housing um, and maybe living and maybe living away from campus a little bit. So uh, making sure you're, you know, you're looking at maps and you're understanding um, uh, transit routes. And I mentioned also at the beginning, the ION light rail transit line. And so if you're looking farther off campus, you do want to make sure that um, you know, you're close to that rapid transit to, to get you to get you in to campus quickly. So um, yeah, lots of things to consider. And um, I think that will, if you could, if you take all of that into consideration, I think that will be a really good start as you um, sort of start your off campus housing search. 
Um, so let's get into a few questions here. Graham, um, I don't know if you want to put all of us up on the screen there, and I'll just go through some of these questions. And um, Emily and Yvonne, we can see who makes most sense to answer them. So first question. Um, we have someone asking, are we able to keep a cat um, in the on-campus housing? I can answer that. If you are a great question. If you are a single grad student, unfortunately, it's not allowed. Pets are not allowed unless it is a service animal. And the service animal do have to go through uh, our campus housing lab a process um, to make sure that it is a, a legit service animal. Other than that, pets are not allowed. If you are a student family, yes, pets will be allowed uh, in your unit. Great. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, someone is asking about when they can expect the contract offers for the fall from CLV North, for example. Okay, so when it comes to grad applications, um, we are working with a new system, so we don't exactly have uh, an exact date of when offers will start, um, but we do anticipate offers uh, will begin going out about the third week of May. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so someone is asking if a student wants to get accommodation in on campus housing, but their study permit got delayed. Um, what happens Would the allocation automatically be transferred to next term um, would fees be credited back. Um, how would that work. Yeah, so that one's a bit of a trickier question, um, just because I have some follow up questions that would depend on my or that would I guess. Uh, warn my answer to be a little bit different. So for the individual who sent that one, if you can send me an email, I can chat about that um, at the housing at uwaterloo inbox. Um, it depends on if you would be able to be making it onto campus by the start of your contract. If you aren't, um, we aren't really able to hold contracts for students who aren't uh, arriving by the, the regulated move-in time. Um, but it, it all depends on the other kind of circumstances that play into that. So that would be kind of a trickier question, but feel free to email me um, and we can chat more about that in detail. Thanks, Emily. Um, someone is saying, I heard that on-campus housing is more expensive than off-campus. Is this true? This is not true. <laughs> um, as Emily just, uh, just went over, um, yeah, I mean, it, it really it really varies, but the the pricing of our on campus housing is really quite reasonable, especially compared to um, sort of what's just out on the open market right now. So it is uh, generally cheaper right now to live on campus. But as Emily mentioned, it is harder to um, you're not guaranteed a spot. So um, there is there is that to keep in mind. Um, can we answer that one? Does on campus housing offer parking? Yes, so parking is available um, and that's all done through parking services on campus. So I believe they have a number of parking passes for CLV. I don't know what that looks like right now, if there's a wait list or if anyone who's interested will, will be able to get a spot, um, but that's all maintained by parking services. But yes, there is parking available for CLV South and CLV North. Awesome. And I see Graham has just popped in the chat the information about um, applying for student parking, and then that will take you to a parking services website as well, and you can contact them too for more details. Um, so someone's asking, I think Yvonne, you answered this, um, do students select their housemates or are they automatically allotted by the university? So you can request a roommate in your application, and we're talking about single grad applications, not family. Um, so you can identify a potential roommate. Um, if you do not uh, have a roommate identified in your application, we do try to keep in mind similarities um, when matching you with um, potential roommates. It's not uh, guaranteed, also keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, so if you do make the request, it's not a given that you will be placed. We do try to make our uh, do our best in in working with those accommodations, um, but sometimes we don't we don't have the availability to accommodate um, all of them. So, thanks, Emily. Um, someone else is asking: Are all housing options quiet and suitable 
for studying? Um, what happens if my housemates are noisy? Yvonne, you want to take that? Yeah. Um, yes. So generally speaking, for the entire CLV, it's very quiet. It's uh, it's actually pretty nice. If you do have um, your housemate who uh, tends to be a bit noisy, my recommendation is to reach out to your Don immediately through Teams message or through email, and your Don will be more than happy to help you address the issue. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, is there any restriction on visitors uh, during during a student stay in on campus housing? So right now for on campus housing, uh, because of the COVID uh, and uh, U Waterloo does have a bit of a, a stricter um, guidance to ensure everybody's safety, we don't allow visit. Uh, we don't allow visitors to uh, we don't allow guests to visit your, um, your unit, especially the common, the living area, uh, your bedroom, the bathroom, it's uh, very, very private. And this is to protect all of us. If at some point that this policy may change, we'll make sure that uh, we, uh, we, everybody is, uh, everybody is uh, on the notice that we are all updated. And when I'm talking about a visitor and a guest, these are non-University of Waterloo contract holders. So that's what I mean over there. Um, for a single grad student, you cannot have uh, anybody, any visitors staying at your unit overnight. And uh, for our families, if you do have guests, once we open up, open up a bit more, not right now, it's probably somewhere in the near future, um, you do have to let me know. And uh, we have a process that you can host someone up to three days um, that is it. We cannot ho host uh, uh, someone who's to stay in your place more than three days once we open up a bit more. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that your basement area for the families is not a bedroom and is not, uh, uh, it does not follow, it does not have the fire safety over there that you cannot have anybody staying in the uh, basement area. Okay, thanks, Yvonne. So um, just to, to quickly recap that. So even in so in non COVID times, um, there are no overnight guests allowed for the, the single grad housing. Um, and right now there are no visitors because of COVID. But if those restrictions relax, then daytime visitors are allowed. Great. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, someone else is asking, is there a nearby grocery store and or gym? Um, if not, where's the nearest locations and how do you get there from CLV North and South? Yeah, so we've got a number of different resources. Um, just down the street, there's a Sobeys um, in a plaza there that has quite a few different shops. Um, and then there's also the gym on campus. So um, we've got within reasonable, re reasonable um, walk there is uh, lots of options for you. And there is also the, as Yvonne mentioned um, in her portion, there's the shuttle um, that goes to the grocery store. If you, know, if you don't wanna carry back a whole bunch of bags and things, um, she did mention that that's not running um, because of COVID, but with restrictions easing, that may, um, that may be something that resumes, but um, that will be communicated to, um, to everyone once that starts up again. Uh, actually, in the same vein, how long of a bus ride is um, is CLV from campus? Like if you're taking the, the city bus? I would say between five and seven minutes, depending on where on campus you're trying to go. Um, which would depending on what side if you're trying to get to. Uh, I'm blanking on the name of it. The bus terminal that's uh, by the Davis Center yep. it might take a little bit longer, um, but if you're just coming up Columbia, which is what CLV um, is off of, you would hit, um, I think it's the east side of campus. Don't quote me on that, um, but it's it's a very quick bus ride. You're not very far from. Yep. Not very yep. far it's from. All, it's all pretty close and, and you can you can walk to if you want to if the weather's nice. Um, but yeah, as Emily mentioned, it's all on the same street, Columbia Street, which is just a straight shot right up to campus. So again, very close and easy to get around. Mm -hmm. um, someone else is asking, um, even though it is optional, do you recommend getting the meal plan or do grad students um, tend to opt to do meals in their, in their own residence and suites? Um, 
grad students, yes, they do tend to cook on their own just because they have the flexibility, they all have the kitchen and uh, they would like to cook their own meal. Uh, you are more than welcome to uh, eat at uh, different dining areas on campus though to try. Uh, and if you decide to uh, register for the meal plan, you are more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, another question is, uh, we mentioned that Columbia Lake Village is very safe. Um, can you please elaborate on any safety services provided, um, such as security, alarm systems, or that kind of thing? All, I would say all our campus, all the living areas are very, very safe in a way that we have special constable services and these are UW uh, campus police. They're patrolling all the time to different areas. Um, and here in a CLV, like I've mentioned that our Dawn is doing their duty rounds every single day to ensure the community safety. Um, and at the community center, we do have like in, only in this public, in this one area, we have security um, camera in this, uh, um, the main community center area. Um, and I would say the entire university, like these, the, these streets that uh, university is located at, I haven't heard anything that, that's not, not that safe. I don't know if you, you guys have anything else to add. No, I haven't heard of any issues. Um, and I've been working on campus for about six years now. Um, it's quite safe. It's a very nice area. Um, CLV South is is close to um, a residential area. So you're getting a lot of families and that. So it's a it's it's a very nice area and there's nice scenic, lots of geese hanging around. I was just um, gonna say it's safe. Stuff. <laughs> it's safe except for the geese during nesting yeah, season. Most <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but they're usually fine. Don't be, don't be too afraid of the geese. They, uh, they're mostly <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, we do have a few questions around um, the duo about can, can we apply for housing if we don't have duo? Um, I'm not sure if that's um, something you can get a little more info on, Emily. Yeah. So uh, upon accepting a, an offer from University of Waterloo, you will be provided with a what I am, which is basically your credentials. Um, so it'll be a, a little tagline and then as well, it'll be a password. If you don't have that set up, um, then you would not be able to apply for either our single grad housing or our family wait list. That component is required in order to be um, granted access into joining either of those pieces. Um, so if you have accepted an offer from the university, IST should be providing you with those details. Um, but that is the process. Perfect, thank you. Um, someone is asking a question and I, I don't know if we'll have this answer, but are all on-campus housing options booked already? I tried to apply, but it failed. Um, they, they don't specify what term this is for. Um, but Yvonne, do you, do you know at all where things are at? Yes, so the spring term, we actually still have some availabilities. Um, so for this individual, if you would like to uh, just email your question to housinguwaterloo.ca, it might just be a specific question, but we do have uh, like availabilities for spring. For the fall, we have not started the, um, the renewals offers yet, so mm -hmm. um, apply, yes. Yeah, and if um, to this person who asked the question, if you are um, having technical issues, feel free to, to email as well um, and we can get that sorted. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, and so somebody actually asked if there was still graduate housing available for spring 2022. So yes, there is, which is awesome. Um, here's one about off-campus housing. Um, on what basis were the off-campus housing options recommended? Uh, was it student feedback, proximity to campus, costs, um, et cetera? Sorry, can you repeat that again? The, on what basis were the off-campus housing options recommended? So on our listing service, like how are they, is it based on student feedback or how do, how do we populate that? Right, um, so it's not, so we, that our system does not have the ability to um, have student feedback. Um, posted there like ratings and such like that. However, if a student does contact us in regards to one of the postings that is on our website with a complaint or anything like that, um, we usually try to work and resolve it or take the posting down. 
Um, so when you look at our off-campus housing website and you're looking at the listings, they're simply um, populated by date of when they've been um, put on the system. Uh, so you can refine your search and search by area um, as well as date of availability. So you can kind of refine your search that way, um, but it's not in a ranking system of uh, best to worst or anything like that. Great, thanks, Emily. Um, someone is asking, are grads limited to only CLV North and South? Yvonne, do you wanna take that? I think so. Um, yes. I've seen here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've, I've heard of the grad, some of the grad students would like to be undergrad dons. I guess that's the only exception that if you'd like to be mingled with the undergrad students and you applied as an undergrad don, that you are offered with a contract, yes, so you will be living with the undergrad community. Other than that, you are here at CLB. Um, I believe, and um, someone can correct me on this, that if you are a grad student through one of the affiliated uh, university colleges, like you know St. Paul's or, um, or or Renison or one of those, I believe there is some grad housing um, through them, but that would be done through that college specifically, and you have to be a student, um, a student of that college. So if you are are with St. Paul's um, and your admission is through them, then that would be an option for housing. But I believe it is it is quite limited. It's not as as large and extensive as CLB North and South. Um, mm -hmm. So those, yeah, so those are the main ones. Yes, if you do have any questions about any of the university colleges, I'd recommend reaching out to them directly because um, we are we are a bit different with campus housing. We run as separate entities. Yep. Um, someone is asking, are there any housing options um, for students with a spouse? Um, and Yvonne, correct me if I'm wrong, but this would be family housing would be yes. the only option. Yep. Yeah. 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 So you need to get on the family housing wait list. So mm -hmm. it, it would probably be a good idea if you're looking for housing, housing with a spouse um, to start an off campus search first, just because of those, um, the weights that Emily talked about with the family housing. Um, I'm not, so this question is, what's the ideal housing plan for a family of five? So I think this, this one, I mean, this one's a little bit more specific, but um, our limit is four, is that correct, Yvonne? So yeah. this yeah. person would have to look for off-campus housing in this case. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you, um, or if that individual is still on this, uh, on this meeting, um, you can send me an email and I can provide you with some resources um, for students with dependents looking for off-campus housing. Thanks, Emily. Um, someone is asking, um, are there, is there any housing that offer monthly leases rather than a, a yearly lease? On campus? Uh, I On think campus. this is, uh, I'm wondering if they mean offer. I mean, off campus, I'm actually not sure. Um, Emily, can you when it, fill that in? Yeah, when it comes to off campus, um, it's pretty tricky to find uh, a month to month rental, um, to be honest with you. Uh, most landlords are looking for students to sign a 12 month lease. Um, so it, it makes it definitely a little bit trickier. It is an option. However, it depends on whether or not the landlord is willing to sign for that sort of a, a a lease but it's it's quite rare i would say yep um sorry some of my questions are jumping around here i think graham is uh saying that we've answered some of them which is awesome um when do external rentals for september tend to come online uh, moving across provinces and with the high cost slash lack of housing could there be the possibility of not being able to move in time if at all. So I think this is a concern that um, is probably shared by by a lot of people. So if you're looking for September, when is the best time to start looking? Now. <laughs> um, I, I would recommend looking now. Um, as we get closer to September, you there will be less options. Um, but things are starting like every day I, I'm receiving new postings. So it's not like we have 50 and it's just depleting. There are new postings that come up or things fall through. Those things come back into the system. Um, but I would say starting your search, the sooner the better. 
Yep, definitely. Um, Yvonne, there's, this is a question um, about furnishings and family housing, which maybe you could just reiterate. They're asking, um, saying family housing is unfurnished. Um, some appliances are provided. Um, which appliances are provided? If you could remind us of that. Yes. So uh, in your kitchen, you have a stove and you have a fridge. You have bathroom over there and that's not appliances, but uh, that, that's about it. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, if you are looking for furniture, we have uh, lots of resources here as well um, that it doesn't not necessarily mean it's uh, very expensive. Right. So there are some there are some lower cost options um, for families who are moving into family housing to look at. Perfect. Um, so also on the subject of families, is there a school near the campus um, for children um, if they are bringing their families? Yes, uh, there's a number of elementary schools and high schools in the area, depending on what you're looking for. Catholic, public, bilingual. Yep, French lots of different options. <laughs> We've got lots of different options. So someone says, can you describe the process after, after accepting their offer? Um, do they directly apply for housing? Yes. Um, do they have to make any payments at that point or do they just wait for housing offer and pay at the start of the term? Yes, so upon applying, um, there is no payment required. Uh, a deposit would be required um, upon when you receive an offer to secure that offer to you. Um, so you don't have to pay anything to apply for either family or single grad. Perfect, thanks. Um, someone's asking about where they can apply for the meal plan if they were to choose that. So when you complete, um, if we're talking about single grad housing, in the application, there is a component where you um, can select uh, which, which option you would like to pick. Um, if by chance things change, you are able to change it after that fact. Um, and make edits to it, but that is the piece, um, or you can contact the walk card office that deals with meal plans directly and, and purchase one through them, but you have the op opportunity to purchase it through the application. Perfect, thanks, Emily. Um, someone's asking, in case we don't get into grad housing, do you assist grad students looking for other grad students to share housing? So I think they're asking about connecting students who want to find shared housing together? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't necessarily have any sort of events or groups um, that would be for that. My recommendation would be to looking uh, for groups on Facebook, um, perhaps, and seeing to find connections there. Um, Yvonne, I don't know if you know of anything. Yeah, someone's asking if someone's asking if we have any social media accounts or Facebook groups um, for finding housemates. I don't know if we have any official Waterloo ones. Um, I don't know if you have any other things to share on that, Yvonne. No, all my students are current CLV students, so I didn't explore this option much yet. Yeah. Um, So are, um, are we allowed to defer the contract of grad housing by a term? So is it, can you defer it if you get an offer? No, okay. no, you can't, unfortunately. Um, what are the benefits of being a Don? Um, is there decreased rent? Um, what comes with that? Yeah, so um, being a Don, um, this will be a great opportunity for you to um, develop a couple of your skills, your communication, your organizational skills, time management, and you will have the benefit to um, come into the housing professional field as well. Um, you are compensated based on the amount of hours that you will be working and you'll be leading events um, and uh, have other responsibilities and to uh, get to know the peers uh, at CLV. Um, so that's also a great uh, PD, professional development opportunity for grad students as well. Um, and in general, I know some of the grad students, they tend to 
uh, close themselves up in their own lab in, and in their own unit. And this gives you a great opportunity to get connected and to engage with the community a bit more. Uh, great for your personal development, your social development, and uh, right now still part of the pandemic, it's uh, great for your mental health. Perfect, thanks Yvonne. Um, someone has a question about uh, priority. Um, do international students get any priority for on-campus housing? Um, are there any guarantees for accommodation? I, based on my understanding, I think we treat everybody equally. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, so yep. No, um, no priorities. Unfortunately, it, it is uh, first come first serve for those. Mm -hmm. Um, for those app offers. Um, someone's asking if they can bring their own mattress to, uh, to CLV, to this would be to the single thread housing. You can, if you want to put your mattress on top of uh, the existing mattress, you like to have a really tall bed with two mattresses. Yeah, feel free. Okay, but, but for example, like you wouldn't, um, Campus housing wouldn't store the the mattress that came with it. You would have to keep that in your suite and bring yes. yours over top. Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. right. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's a couple more follow up questions. Just to confirm people confirming that it's correct that there's no overnight guests, and are there any time restrictions for grad housing, like time in or out, um, and that sort of thing? No time limit. Um, you are all responsible adults, so you are here that whether you choose what time that you come in and out, that's your choice, um, and that's right. So for the visitors' guest policy, that's our current policy that no overnight visitors, no overnight guests. At a certain point, that uh, if our policy uh, does lose a little bit in the future, which you will know, but I cannot give you a date yet. Uh, for family housing, uh, when you reach out to me, we will have a discussion. You may have the option to host someone up to three days. Uh, but if you are a single grad, unfortunately, no, you cannot have anybody staying with you overnight. Okay. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, for students currently out of province looking for off-campus housing in September, what's the best way to go about finding a lease? Um, are virtual tours generally okay, or is it better to go out or have someone look at the place for you in person? I personally feel like in-person is, is the best way to do things. However, I understand that that's not always um, feasible for everyone if they're not living in the area. Um, or if you don't have connections with someone in the area that can look on your behalf, um, then doing a virtual tour is definitely a good backup option. Um, but I would, if if you can, I would recommend uh, viewing the property in person. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely agree with that. If that is something that you your resources allow, um, then that it is always better for sure. Um, is there a cutoff date for family housing? Will we know when the fall housing is full? So I'm gonna to speak to that wait list a bit there. Yeah, so with regard to the family wait list, I will say, um, and I don't know if I mentioned this already, it is an ever end, uh, an ever going list. Um, so it's not like just for the fall term and then you have to reapply for the winter term. Um, it, it's just a continuing list. Um, so if you perhaps no longer in need and you are on the wait list, we recommend and, and actually request that you would remove yourself from the wait list if that no longer applies or you're interested in it, um, just to ensure that we don't have to go through so many contacts in order to get the next one if we've got an available unit. Um, with regards to the wait list, um, I think we have, 150 maybe more families on the waitlist currently um, we don't move through that list very quickly um, and it is a bit more sporadic depending on when when uh, families finish up and are ready to move on um, but we do we do try to work our way through the top and and then go down um, what was the question again sorry um I can't, I'm trying to find which was the one I actually just asked, the one about the cutoff date and if they'll know like when it's full, which right. I think you basically just answered that it is always full. And it's, it's always full. Yeah. yeah, it's always full. Um, 
for the most part, unless we're looking for the next person on the list. Um, but there is no deadline or anything to sign up. You're as long as you've got your what I am and you're eligible. Um, we recommend signing up sooner than later, um, just because of of how high demand it is. Um, there's some questions. I think people maybe were joining late, um, but let's see if we can find some we haven't answered. Uh, do you have to wait to apply for parking until you are accepted to housing? Um, or should we apply now while waiting for approval to make sure we get a spot? Does anybody know? I'm actually not sure. I don't know if parking services will allow you to get on a wait list if you don't have a contract. Um, that would be a question you'd have to ask the, the parking services team. Yeah, I'm sure they would be happy to answer. Um, I know Graham and put the, the link to parking services in the chat, so feel free to um, reach out to them and send a message. Um, someone's asking, how much time is there between move-in and the start of classes? Uh, is there any possibility for early move-in? So when it comes to, if we're, I'll, I'll give um, the upcoming spring term as an example. Um, so single grads are, they are able to move in on Sunday, May 1st um, at 8 a.m. So those with a confirmed contract, that's when they're allowed to um, move in. Classes, I believe, start on, the, I want to say the 5th, the 4th, the 5th, or the 6th. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but there's usually a bit of a time between uh, the start of classes and, and the scheduled move in. That being said, if you do, perhaps if, uh, if the move in date does not work for you, we can always try and work with, um, work with an accommodation. Perfect, thanks. Um, <laughs> there's somebody asking about a barbecue. I don't, I mean, this could be a legit question. It's a bit funny, but um, can they, are they, do they have barbecues? Can they buy their own? Are there rules against them? We do have rules, yes. Um, so, I have to, yeah, I have to look look through the contract again. But um, in your unit, there is a, like you have a lawn area in your back uh, patio. You cannot have your barbecue on top of the lawn. Um, it has to be maintained within your unit, like uh, on the, on that concrete floor, I believe that that, that area. Um, if this is something specific and very important to you, um, email, send the email out, and I believe I will be able to do a bit more research and provide more concrete answers. Okay, but there isn't like a rule that's like no barbecues or something? Like no. Okay. Uh, families, yeah, I do see families, they have, they have their barbecues. You, you just have to be, uh, you just have to be careful of, of what, where you put your barbecue. Um, can a student live with their family in the single room, like two bedroom suite, for example? Sorry, I'm a little confused. I, I think that's, that would be, single, yeah, single that would be no. Housing? Yeah, so the, the, the only place that families can live is in the family housing. I think they're asking if they could live like in one of the single grad student suites that have the two suites and a family could be there but that's not how we sharing, sharing a unit with a student. Yeah. No. Well, or, or it would be like, they're in a two bedroom, single grad student unit and like, you know, their kids are in one room and they're in another room. No, so, no, no. Yeah. all the single grad fam, uh, students, they have to be contract holders. They, I, it's not, uh, it's not up to the setting of a one student with a va one family member. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, a couple of questions that people I think may have missed from the start about um, how long after they submit the application will it take to hear back? I think Emily, you said offers will start to go out in early May. Third week of May, you Third should see offers May. coming out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So towards the end of May. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's asking, is there a place on campus for visiting parents to stay overnight? No, unfortunately we don't have a space. Um, dedicated for parents that are coming to visit. Um, we do have a web page on our website uh, with short-term accommodations and some suggestions of what's close by campus um, and that. So I would recommend checking that out, but um, no, unfortunately we don't. 
yeah, there are there are hotels and stuff um, in the area which you can um, find by searching and some that are um, relatively close to campus. Somebody was asking about coming for tours and that sort of thing. So there are options. And of course, Airbnb options as well. Mm -hmm. um, somebody asking, what is the deadline for grad students coming for fall term to apply for housing? Um, there, I mean, there isn't really there isn't a deadline. I think Emily um, was mentioning that um, it does fill up quite quickly and it's first come first serve. So if you are looking to get into that single grad student housing, um, apply as soon as you're able. Um, and then I think we also, somebody's asking about how long does it take to determine if you've been accepted. As Emily said, it'll be towards um, the end of May offers will start going out. Um, it's because this person is wondering about um, when they should go sign an apartment lease instead and how long they should wait. Um, but if you're, if you are looking for September, I mean, if you're, if you're looking in that June period, like you, you're still in, you still will, will probably be able to find how off campus housing for September. Um, Emily, I don't mm -hmm. know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, you should. Um, it, it, again, it depends on your comfortability with the situation. If you're if you're someone who likes to be organized and you would just be, feel more comfortable having your housing situation determined, um, then off-campus housing is always a good option. Just because our our options aren't offers aren't going to be going out until the uh, nearing the end of May. So if you're someone who's already planning in, in ahead, um, then that's something you could consider. Um, but then again, if you want to wait and see if you do get in something with off on campus, you should still be able to find off campus options at that time as well. Um, someone's asking what happens if you haven't found housing yet by the time you arrive here. That's a great question. Yeah, um, it's, I mean, I would say you'd probably have to look at some sort of shorter term rentals like Airbnb would probably be your best option. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, that is going to be more expensive, um, but I, I have heard of, of students and even non-students doing that too when they're, you know, when they're in between places and um, because there is a lot of demand for September and then maybe you haven't found something, but you're able to find a short-term Airbnb and then continue looking for a place. Um, that's also an option, um, but of course, you know, resource-wise, that is going to be, that is going to be more expensive, but that, or I mean, staying with, I mean, if you're coming from out of province or out of country, it's tougher because you don't know people. I would say staying with friends, but that's that's a little harder when you don't know people. Um, so probably those short-term Airbnb type things would be your best um, your best option. Is there anything I'm missing, you think, Emily? Nope, I think that, that answers it perfectly. Okay. Um, uh, there's been a couple of couple of questions I've noticed about the around the fees. Um, people wondering about why the fees for the suites of four are more expensive than for two. This is for the for the single grad student housing. Do you know Yvonne or Emily? I off the top of my head, I do not know. That is a good question. Um, I would have to inquire with that one because off the top of my head, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't think we're at the position to decide uh, the, fina the finance piece for, for campus housing. Um, if it's you it's are, above our pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> you are eager to, to figure it out. You're welcome to send us an email. We can try our best. Um, yeah. Um, I've, there's been a couple of questions around if we still have the proof of vaccination for um, living on campus in the fall. Yvonne, do you want to take that? Um, I think most of recently was, I can't remember because we, we, so we yeah. yeah, we strongly recommend that you stay up to date with your COVID-19 vaccinations to reduce the risk of the future Waterloo studies being interrupted. Um, and while currently our vaccination requirement has been lifted, please keep in mind that it could be reinstated at any time. Yeah, it is a rapidly evolving situation and um, the leadership of the university is very conscious of that. And, um, you know, while they do want to try and be as flexible as possible, that is very true what Emily said that it could it could change it at any moment. So even though it's lifted now, that doesn't mean that um, it, it will be 100% for the fall. So 
Mm -hmm. Best just to stay up to date if you're able. Um, I'm just doing a quick look through some of the other ones. Um, some people who do have questions um, about fees and, and rent and payment and that kind of thing. Um, if you did miss it from earlier in the presentation, um, once we post it, you'll be able to go back and have a look. And again, also the links that we shared, um, all of that information is on the campus housing um, website. And on our website, the GSPA website under study and living costs, um, we just we have a budget calculator tool as well. If you're looking at um, not only your housing costs, but what is a whole term and a whole year going to cost um, living in Waterloo that will sort of help you make those plans. Um, so yeah, lots of resources available, but I think, um, I think we have, we have answered most of the questions. Um, so people who, for people who do have more questions about the vaccinations, um, if you visit our main website, I think we still have the COVID-19 page up and available. And that's going to be, so we try and keep that as a central resource. And there is an email address there as well that you can email for COVID um, and vaccination specific questions. And that central resource is going to be um, your best place for everything related to COVID and um, what the requirements are. Um, all right, so I think we've got to most of the questions. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us and thank you, Emily and Yvonne. And Emily has been uh, very gracious in um, offering that she will answer, answer your questions if you have very specific ones. Um, she is doing a great job at fielding all the emails. So it might take her, uh, might take her a couple of days get, to get back to you, but um, you know, please do reach out if you have questions. Um, we're all here to assist you and help make your transition to Waterloo a good one. So again, thank you everyone for joining us and um, we will see you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.